Then the other aspect to make it all come together is you've got to be able to block these holes. You've got to be able to access these holes and block these holes successfully. Um, which in part involves using materials. You've got to give a lot of thought to the materials that you're using to block these holes. Um, I mean, our general ethos is that the material must be um, as strong, if not stronger, than the surrounding substrate. So things like uh, expanding foams are out. I mean, expanding foams like polystyrene. This is a single component polyurethane expanding foam. There's a lot of drawbacks with that. It's, a, it's propelled by propane, so you've got a, a flammable gas to pr propel it. So if you're discharging a lot of that in, a, in, a, in an environment where you've got an ignition source, like a kitchen, um, there have been many instances of uh, explosions and fires from people using expanding foam in uh, kitchens. Um, you've got a product that, when it sets, has an open cell structure. So if you break expanding foam, it's like an aero bar, but the bubbles are all connected. And what that means is a bit like a car filter. It'll still air vapour and will still flow quite freely through it. And you can test that for yourself. And if you break off a chunk, you can, you can blow through it. So the mice comes back to the hole that you fill with expanding foam. It can still smell through it. And we go back to what we were talking about earlier in terms of these are not visionary. So it comes back, you can't see the foam, but it can still smell uh, the, the, the vapours and the, um, it can still sense a certain amount of air pressure. It knows the hole is still there. The next thing it does is engage the mouth. It'll have a chew. And if it chews foam and it comes off like polystyrene, it just chews straight through it. So the critical thing is, but it won't engage the mouth unless the, unless the nose tells it to. So you could repeat that scenario and you could use something like clear silicon mastic over that hole, which isn't the strongest thing in the world. It's just a rubber at the end of the day. But the most critical thing is it will stop um, air, it'll stop smell, odours and um, air vapour and air currents. So mice comes back but the, the, the nose says there's no hole or I can't smell anything, I can't sense any wind currents because the, the sealant has sealed it, therefore it doesn't engage the mouth. No need to because in, in, in its set perception there's, there's, there's nothing there. These things don't randomly go around biting stuff, they're not like termites or, or whatever the analogy is. They'll only engage the nose, the, the mouth if the nose set, t tells it to. So yes, you do have to give quite careful consideration to what you're proofing it with. And we only use professional products. I mean, the, the, another critical thing is that most of our work is for local authorities and housing associations where they've been served a notice under the, uh, the 49 Pest Prevention Act. For the local environmental health body has served a notice saying that you must, under that act, um, as social landlords, you must prevent the ingress of rodents into the property. With, with our rodents here, you need to block the holes. And they stipulate under, under their notices that it must be, uh, the holes must be blocked using like materials. And they also stipulate not foam.